This is the second video about using Affinity Photo to process our images. This image is a landscape from the North Thompson River Valley in the interior of BC. And looking at this image, this bright spot draws the eye of the viewer. But I would also like these trees, the springtime trees, to be more of a focal point. And I would like to brighten this because compositionally, this counterbalances the cliff. So let's go to the develop persona. And I'm going to add some detail here and here with elliptical gradients. So let's put one here. Move the exposure up a bit. That's enough there. Choose another gradient. Run it along the spur. Increase the exposure just a, just a bit. And now I want to use a soft brush so, so we'll drop this hardness to zero. And I am going to make the brush edge aware because I'm going to brush this area down here and I want my overlay to stick pretty well to the rocks. Like this. And we'll make this large rock part of our overlay. We'll use the overlay eraser to so just take that out, that out, and now we'll, well, just brighten this area a little. That's good. And then we can brush the rest. So now this area provides a bit of a balance to the cliff. Now there's some vegetation along the riverbank. I would like that to be a little more visible. So I'm going to use another brush overlay and just brush here and here and this one. And this here. And again, just increase the exposure just slightly so that we can see that. So looking at my overlays, 
click show overlay here. There's the one I just did. There's the one there. Then there was this gradient overlay and this gradient overlay. One more thing I'd like to do, this part here and this part here are on the edges and they're bright and they're a little distracting. So I am going to use one more brush overlay there and for here and just bring them down slightly. What happened there was I forgot to take off the show overlay, so even though I was brushing over it, the overlay stayed there. Okay, so let's return to the develop module. Sorry, to the photo module. And the colors are okay. Here they're quite pleasant, but I would like them to be like the scene to be a little more colorful and I am going to achieve that by using the selective color adjustment but before I do that I'm going to make a map of the dominant colors so that I can see which colors are dominant in this image so first I click the rectangle and I put a rectangle across the image. And you'll see this is now a separate layer, a new layer. I want the fill to be 50% gray, which is the same as 50% black. So there we are. And now I want to change the blend mode of this gray layer to luminosity. And you can see that there's a map showing the dominant colors, but it's a little hard to see. So let's make that easier to see by creating a hue saturation layer. It's a child layer here. I want it to be a parent layer, so I move it up there. And all I'm going to do is increase the saturation so that it's easier to see the colors. So now you can see this yellow is the trees, the, the springtime foliage. There's a lot of blue here and on the river, but where the sun is hitting the river, there are yellow tones. The greens are dispersed here with blue and purple and there's some red on the bluffs. So it's red, yellow, green and blue. So we'll go we'll So there's the image, there's our um, color map. So now we will go down to the adjustment layers and we will choose selective color and selective color we we can change reds yellows greens cyan's blues magentas whites neutrals and blacks independently so i'm going to start with the reds and remember there were reds on the bluffs and some vegetation there that's red that will do that's far enough now let's have a look at the yellows I increase the yellow 
can see that happening in the trees. And look what happens if I decrease the blue, they become a little more golden. And if I increase the magentas, they become very golden, like full. Well, I don't want them to look like full because it's spring. So I'm going to stay there. Again, we're not looking for in your face color changes, just enough small changes that together, cumulatively, make a difference. So let's have a look at the greens. Green is made up of blue and yellow, so let's just pull these up. It's hard, to, a little hard to see, but there's some variation in here caused by doing that. And now let's look at the, the blues. There, there, I think it's blues, not cyan. So we'll just increase this and you can see if you want to look down here, there's a blue tinge. So that looks pretty good. And see, this is blue and the this part of the river has become warmer because we changed the, uh, the yellows. The magentas we don't need to worry about or anything else. So there's our adjustment layer as a child there. And this is before we did any adjustments and this is after. So not huge changes by any means, but just a little. So the last thing I'm going to do is find the white point and black point. And I'm going to do that. There are a number of ways of doing it. I like to do it through this threshold adjustment layer. Again, I want this to be apparent. And what this is doing is it's showing true blacks and true whites, depending on where I put the slider. So if I move this slider to the left, all the blacks will go away. Well, I don't want that, but that is where the true blacks are. And I think that's fine. So I'm going to label that black point. And now I will find the white point by repeating this, going to the threshold adjustment and moving, instead of moving the cursor, the slider that way, moving it this way until I have my pure whites and I'm going to put that there and label this white point. And there I have the finished image. Thank you for watching this video.